Hey all, welcome to the ninth episode of DS101 series and in this one we will be talking about partitioning through primary key. So in previous episode as well we talked about partitioning through primary keys but in previous episode we talked about how we can partition uh, data sets within the database through their primary keys with their actual values and in this one we will be talking about how we can use their hash values to do so. So basically we will gonna like discuss uh, partitioning the primary keys through their hash values or hash based partition so I'm just gonna write it down here so partitioning or we can also say it as database sharding since we are trying to shard or partition the items present in a database so let's do a small recap of what we did in our previous episode so in our previous episode we had this example where students were trying to enroll in a cs course right so we had a cs course and in this cs course a lot of students were trying to get enrolled so now the concept is that uh, we had a database which we had sharded so uh, if you haven't watched episode 8 you should definitely go through it before watching this one it will gonna give you more insights on how to approach uh, this episode but yeah let's continue uh, so what we did is that we had sharded the database and we had multiple different replicas or machines right and every machine was trying to like register students on a particular day so what we had in mind is that we had a seven day period or we can call it a seven day registration period right where we were allowing the students to get registered on the in the cs course so what what we are trying to do is that so if a student comes up so within this seven day registration period basically from day one to day seven we were allowing the students to get registered here so a student can basically come on a particular day and register themselves into the cs course now these were the machines here right which were taking care of like registration process so maybe we can call this machine as m1 right we can call this machine as m2 we can call this one as m3 and so forth and so on we can call this as m7 so these were the machines or the db instances which are taking care of the registrations right all of them now if a student comes up and tries to register on say day 3 then this request will be routed to this particular machine and the student will be registered here now the problem what we were facing with this uh, this is this process is basically uh, we are trying to uh, shard through the primary keys where, where we have taken the primary key as the date on which student is trying to register right so this is the primary key and we are trying to actually like partition the data items with the actual value of the primary key now since we are trying to partition with the actual value uh, on a particular day a student will be registered to that particular machine which is responsible for the registration so what we were what the problem we were facing here was the problem of hotspots so this was the issue here basically so we were facing a, lot, a problem of hotspots in in this chart uh, how we were uh, facing this problem so suppose uh, on day three we had a uh, suppose we had a um, holiday or we had a like discount on that day three so i'm just gonna move it down here okay so suppose on day three we say that okay on day three we'll provide an 80 percent discount on our course to whosoever register on this particular day so now what will happen is that we have uh, seven shards right so we have seven shards right we can call it m1 m2 and so forth and so on we can call this m7 now on this particular day since we had 80 percent of discount a lot and lot of traffic will be here right lots and lots of students will trying to register themselves right on this particular day three because they are getting an 80 percent discount on the price of the course right so what will happen is that this particular this particular machine will have increasing amount of load or will have increased amount of traffic while the rest of the machine 
will stay as it is and this is basically what we call problem of hotspots where one machine is like facing incredible amount of traffic while the other machine are left unutilized or there is ununiform or non-uniform distribution of load within the shards so this was the problem here which we are trying to solve and now what we will do is that we will try to use hash based partitioning to solve this one now let's discuss hash based partitioning or hash based shard so we discussed the problem statement right now let's i'm gonna scroll it down a bit here okay cool this looks good good so let's try to uh, introduce hash based sharding now so what things will change so we will still have students which uh, will be able to register themselves onto the cs course right we will still have the shards right we're still gonna have the shards which will be responsible for handling the registrations so we can call them m1 m2 m3 and so forth and so on we can have m7 so there are like uh, we have seven machines or we can call it database shards which can handle or we can store the registration of the students but now what will happen is that we will still have like date as a primary key right but the things the thing which will change is that we will have a hash or a hash key introduced in between so we will have a hashing algorithm which will be responsible for generating hash values if like so basically what this thing will do is that we pass into the particular value into this hash function or a hash method and it will return a hash value which is basically uniformly distributed so it depends upon what hash algorithm you try to use so let's say we are using a particular hash algorithm h here now what happens is that if a student tries to register themselves on a particular date right let's say this is the date then it will generate a hash value for that particular date and this will be this can vary for different different dates and in this way this hash value will be directed to either one of these machines so now what will happen is that we are no longer directly sharding on the basis of date we are first generating a hash value for a particular date and then that particular hash value is directed to the particular machine right and in this way we can avoid the problem of the hotspots in sharding how we can do that let's discuss here so what the idea is that we have a hash method sorry we have a hash method right and we can pass a particular date instance to this particular hash method and this will return a hashed value right a uniform hash value right it returns a uniform hash value and we use this particular hash value to further further direct it to the servers or the shards so the thing is that suppose uh, if student say s1 tries to register themselves on 17th of april 2024 on at 2 pm in the afternoon right and let's say there is another student s2 that tries to register themselves on the same date right on 17th of april 2024 but at a different time maybe at a, at 3 30 pm right in the afternoon now what will happen is that both of these will go through a shard right so both of them will gonna go through the hash method right so we used a hash method h right they both will go through the hash method and this will generate a value for that particular date right this will also generate a value for this 
particular date now the concept here is that since both these timestamps are different even though these students are registering on the same time but still the timestamp is different or basically both the students are, regist are registering on the same date the timestamp is different right even they registered on 17th of april one of them registered at 2 pm and another registered at 3 pm and that is why if they are passed through the hash method the hash method will generate a different hash values for both of them so these two will be different right and since these two are different they will be further directed to different machines so this may this there can be a chance then this that, that that this particular hash value is directed to machine m2 and this can get directed to machine m3 so there is a huge chance that these two will be directed to a different machine and that is the concept here so now what will happen what what we what we see here is that even though students who are trying to register themselves on on the same date they are no longer being directed to the same machine because of the hash hash function which we have introduced in the middle and that is why it is allowing the dates the students to be distributed to the different different machines so now what can happen is that put it down here so now what can happen is that if again we have machines right so suppose we have seven machines right similar the way we discussed previously now if this if if we say that on day three again we have 80 percent discount on the course price right on day three we have 80 percent discount on the course price then what will happen is that a lot of students will try to register themselves on day three but it's not guaranteed or it is never guaranteed that all those all these students will gonna register themselves on the same time step it will always be the case that those students who are registering on day three can be registering on different different timestamps. someone can be uh, some students can be there at 8 a.m some can be at 9 a.m some can be in the in afternoon 12 p.m some can be there at night 8 p.m right and so forth and so on and since these timestamps are varying these will the hash values for all these dates will also vary and these will be distributed across the machines so now there will be no longer an increased load on machine m3 there will no longer be the case that there is an increased load on m3 and all of them will have a well distributed load because we have a hash method in picture which is generating different different hash values for all these timestamps here so this is the concept and this this is how we avoid hotspots when we try to perform partitioning or sharding right using hash based method now we are no longer facing the problem of hotspot but there is one another problem which we are facing when you when we are using a hash based sharding which we did not face before when we were using a basic value based sharding so let's talk about that so we saw in this in the previous um, use case i'll just gonna draw it up here so we had uh, seven machines right again i'm gonna draw the boxes here right we had uh, seven machines like this and a student was trying to come up to register so when we were not using a hash based sharding we guaranteed we had a guarantee that m1 or machine m1 will have all the registration of the students on day one m2 will have all the registrations on day two similarly m3 on day three and so forth and so on m7 on day seven so if someone like tries to some uh, some marketing people for that particular course try to understand that okay let me know that how many students we got registered on day three so if they, if they ask that how many students registered on day three this is one of the query which they are trying to like 
get answer for so here if we have to like check how many students are registered on day 3 we know that we query this particular machine m3 and we get the count of registered students then we can very easily know that how many registrations we got on day 3 and that is one of the like one of the basic advantage when we were simply sharding on the basis of primary keys when we are not introducing the hashing here because whenever we wanted to like understand like when we don't need to involve multiple machines into picture and we already knew that which machine we have to uh, look into for a registration of students on a particular day but uh, what happened when we tried to introduce hash so now again I'm gonna draw the same thing here we had sorry we had yeah. so we had seven machines m1 m2 m3 and m7 but now the catch is that we don't know we can't say that which day registration or which students registered on which day and how they are associated to this particular machine so we can't say that okay this machine m1 will always hold the students who registered on day one there can be like students from day two as well day three as well day four day five and like so forth and so on day seven as well why because we were using a hash functions so we were in, we introduced a hash method which was like for a particular date it was trying to generate a hash value and this hash value was well distributed and that is the reason we don't know that for which date it was directed to which particular machine so they can have like registration for all the days right so day one to day seven for every machine so if every machine will have registration will be holding a registration from day one to day seven and that is one of the drawback here because if now we want to query suppose if someone asks that okay like this this your hash method looks good we have like we were able to um, avoid the problem of hotspots but like now can you tell me that how many students registered on day three so we can tell how many students got registered in day three but not as simply simply as we did previously in the previous example the the thing the things are becoming complex now because we don't know which machine is holding the data for day three so what we have to do is that we eventually have to query each and every machine one by one so we'll ask for each and every machines and we will get the response from each and every machines right so so forth and so on we will get responses like r3 r2 r1 r7 and so forth and so on a lot of responses from every machines which will have like which will give all the students which have registered in their machine for day three and then we have to like join these responses basically so whatever responses we got we have to join them back and then further we have to return this final response back to the user saying that hey this is the final list of the students who registered on day three and that is the complexity here which got introduced although we were able to like avoid hotspots but we introduced this additional complexity when we try to like query a particular number of students registered on a particular day